Hey there, I'm Mish, and I'm a PhD researcher who publishes studies on both psychology and nutrition. And today I'm answering a question that I've gotten a lot, and that you guys recently voted for on my Instagram, which is, does intermittent fasting actually lead to weight loss, and should you do it if you're trying to lose weight? And specifically, I want to address the idea that intermittent fasting is this magical weight loss solution, because a lot of fitness influencers out there constantly talking about how intermittent fasting is really good for weight loss. And I will be talking about intermittent fasting in terms of fasting within a day. So for example, fasting for 16 hours, like from 8 p.m. to noon, and then eating for 8 hours, like from noon to 8 p.m. And I'll be looking at a variety of intermittent fasting windows and times of day. So hopefully, if you have any questions about intermittent fasting throughout the day, these studies in this video can answer them for you. And I think that the results of these studies are probably going to be a surprise to you because there is some massive confusion going on in the intermittent fasting field and people talking about the topic. And that's the fact that in the research world, where I mostly am, the term intermittent fasting is actually most often used to talk about fasting alternate days. So for example, you might fast two days a week and eat normally five days a week. When in fact, the thing that most of you probably think of when you think intermittent fasting is actually called time-restricted feeding which is when you just eat for a certain number of hours in a day and then fast for the other hours in the day. So I'm going to be talking about time-restricted feeding today, not fasting alternate days. But if you're interested in a video on alternate day fasting, let me know in the comments below. And today I found five studies for you on how putting people on an intermittent fasting diet affects their body weight and body composition. And the reason I have so many studies is because they look at intermittent fasting in a variety of types of people, men, women, old, young, overweight, normal weight, and also because you need multiple studies to see if anything's actually going on because any one study could have a result and it could be just due to chance. And before I get into the studies, I just wanted to quickly mention that I finally redid my Patreon so it's like a normal Patreon where there's tiers and rewards. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons who have been supporting me just as a donation basis. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that and how much it means to me. But now I have tiers, so for example for a dollar a month you can get your social media advertised on my website. You can be part of the community where you get to ask me questions and I give you specific tailored answers. And there's other tiers for things like early content and even sort of coaching services. So if you're interested in any of that, check out my Patreon. I put it in the description below. And it's also up here in this card. I'm gonna go through these studies pretty quick because there are five of them. And I'm gonna go through them in order of how many hours are in the intermittent fasting window. And one of the most common lengths of eating windows in intermittent fasting is an eight hour window where you fast for 16 hours and then eat for eight hours of the day. In the first study I looked at, the researchers had normal weight people, so people who are not overweight or obese, and they put them on either an intermittent fasting diet where they only ate for eight hours a day or on a normal diet, so just continued their normal diet. And importantly, they matched the number of calories that each group consumed. And this is really important because a lot of people who are really into intermittent fasting and proponents of intermittent fasting say that it actually leads to weight loss even without a difference in the number of calories you eat. And as you may know from my other videos, calories in versus calories out doesn't really work in most cases, but a lot of people think that intermittent fasting is one of these cases where you can magically lose weight without changing how many calories you're eating because people say it causes metabolic adaptation where you're able to burn more calories just because you're doing this shorter eating window rather than eating all day long. And the study found that after six weeks, there was no difference in people's weight. So eating for only eight hours a day instead of as much as you want all day long did not lead to any weight loss when the calories were matched. Another study looked at intermittent fasting in older adults, specifically people with an average age of 77. Now I know that probably doesn't apply to most people on my channel, but Someone here might be 77 or around that age range, so I wanted to share this one just in case. It could be useful to anyone. And in this study, the participants were overweight or obese. Over four weeks, doing intermittent fasting, where they only ate for eight hours a day, led to about five pounds of weight loss in older adults. But this study didn't actually share how many calories the different groups ate, so we don't know if they just reduced their calories as a result of intermittent fasting. I'm gonna talk about both these kinds of studies because if intermittent fasting does naturally lead you to eat fewer calories just on its own, then that could make it a useful weight loss method because even if it's not magical with having you burn more calories just from fasting, it can still help you lose weight if it's making you eat less. So I will address all those possibilities here. The next study I have for you is one of the coolest ones I found because they have a really interesting result. 
and they wanted to know what happened when you skipped breakfast. And this is just another way of looking at intermittent fasting. And this study was done in normal weight adults. And what they did was they had half of the participants eat at least 700 calories before 11 a.m. So they ate a nice big breakfast. And they had the other half of participants not eat anything before noon. And then they let them eat normally the rest of the day. And importantly, they didn't give participants any other instructions about changing their diet. So they were just supposed to skip breakfast and figure out the rest on their own, just depending on how they felt. The group that ate breakfast, so the group that was not intermittent fasting, ended up eating about 550 extra calories a day compared to the group that skipped breakfast. So that may seem like it's going to cause a massive difference in weight, where the intermittent fasting group should lose a lot of weight because they're eating 550 calories less, right? Nope! Their body weight was exactly the same, or not significantly different, after six weeks of eating this way. A lot of people say that intermittent fasting is particularly useful for body composition, so like reducing your fat mass and increasing your muscle mass. But in this study, they found that there were no differences in participants' lean mass or fat mass. So intermittent fasting and eating 550 fewer calories a day did nothing to these participants' weight or fat mass or muscle mass. What may be my favorite part of this study is most of that 550 calorie difference came from carbs and especially sugar. So the group that was eating breakfast was eating a lot more carbs than the other group and a lot more sugar and a lot more calories overall. So it looks like intermittent fasting in this case did not help with weight loss even though they were eating 550 fewer calories. And those calories are coming from carbs and sugar. Now if you've watched any of my other videos then you probably have an idea by now of why overeating Carbs and sugar might not cause weight gain. If you're interested in videos on that, check out links in the description below. For example, this one, which could explain this weird result in this study. One reason that the researchers found for why there was no difference in weight despite this massive difference in calories consumed was that the people who ate breakfast expended more energy doing light physical activity. So this means that they were burning off more calories just by doing what they do throughout the day, especially in the morning. But importantly, this was not scheduled exercise. So it's not that the breakfast group people were like deciding to go for a run in the morning or something. It was more like doing just spontaneous daily activities, they said. So things like doing chores, cleaning, maybe doing a grocery errand, things like that. And so the really cool result from this study is that it actually is kind of the opposite of what a lot of people say that intermittent fasting does for you. Whereas instead of getting this magical increase in metabolic rate from intermittent fasting, you're actually seeing the opposite, where you're not able to eat as many calories to stay at the same weight. So people who are eating breakfast were able to eat more without gaining weight, but we haven't gone through all the studies yet, so things could change depending on the number of hours that you're fasting. The next study I'm going to tell you about had a six hour eating window. So that is 18 hours fasting, six hours eating. And this one's a little bit different because unlike most intermittent fasting protocols and studies, they had the eating window in the morning. So for example, people would eat from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. and then not eat the rest of the day. And this study was done in normal weight men. Both the intermittent fasting group and the normal eating group ate the same number of calories and there was no difference in their weight over the course of five weeks. So again we see no difference in weight from intermittent fasting when people are just left to their own devices while doing their intermittent fasting. So they're not told to calorie restrict or do anything like that. And the last study I have for you did a four hour eating window, which sounds pretty difficult if you ask me, but they had participants eat from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. and not eat the rest of the time. In this study, the intermittent fasting group ate an average of 65 calories less per day for eight weeks while doing intermittent fasting. It just like naturally happened, but there was no difference in body weight. So it did not cause weight loss. There was a small decrease in fat mass in the group that did intermittent fasting compared to the one that didn't, but the study was a little bit fishy with some of their stats because they actually contradict themselves in the results section. So it's pretty clear that one of the reviewers told them to put something in and then the authors like didn't take something else out. Um, but it looks like there was a small difference in fat mass, but not one that occurred over the course of the diet. If you looked at an individual person, over time in the intermittent fasting group, they didn't actually lose fat mass from where they started in any significant way. But there was a small difference in how much body fat people had between the group that did intermittent fasting and the group that did not. So there could have been a little bit of something here, but it's not totally clear. And importantly, the people who did the intermittent fasting reported feeling hungrier, less full, that they planned to eat more, that they wanted to eat more, 
and this actually got worse over time. So not only did people not get used to feeling hungry all the time, but it actually got worse throughout the study even though they weren't losing weight. So the combination of feeling hungry and only being able to eat four hours a day and not even losing weight, again, makes it seem like four hour intermittent fasting window maybe. It's not a very great way to lose weight. Another interesting part of the study was that six out of the 21 participants actually dropped out during the study. So that is over a quarter of the subjects. So it seems like at least 25% of people were not having a good time and the ones who remained may have been people who already naturally like to eat during a more restricted part of the day, and that might be why you saw this fat mass decrease, because it kind of fits in with their circadian rhythm anyway. But it is important to note that this diet seems really hard to stick to for people even when they're being paid to do it in these studies. I can also do a separate video on the health effects of intermittent fasting for people who are interested, but just a tidbit from this study is that they found that blood pressure was higher in the group who did intermittent fasting, which is not so good if you have high blood pressure, but good for people like me who have low blood pressure, so do with that what you will. So far, it's looking like the studies on intermittent fasting in terms of eating during a few hours of the day are all over the place. And even in the rare studies that do find weight loss from intermittent fasting, the effects are very small compared to a lot of other ways to lose weight. So for example, you may remember from my video on processed versus unprocessed foods and weight loss, I'll also put that in the description, when people were put on an unprocessed food diet, they actually overate by 100 calories per day above their energy expenditure, but they actually lost a pound a week while feeling less hungry, more full, more satisfied, and in contrast, people on the processed food diet way overate in terms of calories, and they gained even more weight than they should have just based on the number of calories they were overeating. And that is in stark contrast to these intermittent fasting studies where you have to feel hungrier, probably not going to lose weight anyway, <laughs> whereas with just switching to more unprocessed foods, you can eat more and lose weight and feel less hungry. So seems like a better deal. And there's a lot of other ways to lose weight out there, which I talk about a lot on this channel, but I will get back to intermittent fasting now. It seems like the reason that so many people say they lose weight on intermittent fasting is that they're not just doing intermittent fasting. Because for example, when you're trying to lose weight, do you try everything you can, like increasing exercise, improving your diet, eating less, maybe intermittent fasting, or do you just do one thing like a scientist? Because scientists only change one variable when they want to examine something, but people who have a goal are going to do everything they can to reach that goal because it just makes sense. So I've noticed a lot of people who talk about intermittent fasting being their magical weight loss bullet have also improved their diet quality and exercise more and are just generally motivated to do weight loss behaviors. So I think that's caused a lot of confusion because people who see intermittent fasting success stories are really seeing people who have successfully lost weight through a variety of methods. In fact, even placebo can cause people to lose weight, which I can talk about more in other videos if you guys are interested. But just believing you're going to lose weight can lead to weight loss. So if you believe intermittent fasting is going to work, then it might work for you. Whereas in these studies, they're better about controlling for these kinds of placebo effects. And now for advice on what you should do. If you enjoy eating breakfast, you should eat breakfast. If you don't feel hungry when you wake up in the morning, then don't eat breakfast. I personally don't usually feel hungry in the morning, so I usually end up waiting until 11 or noon to eat because that's just when I start feeling hungry. So if you're like me and you do accidental intermittent fasting, that's great. If you want to eat breakfast because you're hungry, then you should definitely eat breakfast because that's your body telling you that you are actually hungry, assuming you are listening to your true physiological signals. The studies I've gone over so far in this video have been focused on people eating a standard diet, so no special high-carb or low-carb diets, and people who are not athletes. If you are interested in seeing videos on either of those topics, so for example, low-fat versus high-fat diets and intermittent fasting, or intermittent fasting and bodybuilders, let me know in the comments below, because I do have some studies on those, but I only want to do it if people would actually be interested in that, so I'm not just talking to the void. So the verdict on intermittent fasting in these conditions that I've talked about that it seems like it's not great, but it's not terrible. Like maybe it'll work for you. If you are not the type of person who feels like fasting because it's not a fun way to live for you and it makes you hungry, then you definitely should not fast as a way to lose weight. I have a ton of studies that I've made videos on that have really easy ways to lose weight where you don't have to have any food rules, no restriction, nothing except for listening to your body and eating some healthy foods. So if you're interested in that, I've got playlists on that. Just check out my other videos.
And for those of you wondering why what I'm telling you is so different from what you've probably read on tons of bodybuilders' blogs and fitness influencers' sites and health coaches' Instagrams, is that, unfortunately, the media is generally really bad at reporting on science. One of our biggest pet peeves as scientists is when media takes our studies and then reports on them wrong and gets the results completely wrong or the methods wrong. And it happens all the time, especially in nutrition and health and psychology, because unfortunately these things are really complicated and that's why PhDs take six years on average because it takes a lot of time to learn how to parse these studies. So I think what's happened is that a lot of people have read like media that thinks that every time intermittent fasting is mentioned in the scientific literature, it means time-restricted feeding. And so I think that's led to a lot of confusion in these types of fitness and diet circles, where it kind of becomes an echo chamber of people saying that this thing works because one news writer or blogger misread an article and misunderstood it. It's sad because I think science should be really accessible to everyone, and like, we do need media to report on it, but it should probably go through more rigorous proofing processes. That's my little <laughs> scientist tidbit for you. But I hope this can be helpful for you and kind of clear up some of these misconceptions. And thanks so much for watching. If you want to support me making these videos, please share, like, subscribe, comment below, or support me on my Patreon. I really appreciate all your support here, and I hope you're all staying safe and sane in quarantine, and I will see you next time.